end. Joining us right now to talk more about privacy and technology, espionage, global payment CEO Jeff Sloan. Jeff, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. One of the important components to, to global payments is your financial technology related to privacy. Tell us about that. Sure. So the most important thing to remember about our business is that our customer is the merchant, not the consumer. Uh, so the health of our business is really driven by the health of the merchant and really the health of the consumer. The higher GDP, the more people spend, the better our business is. But unlike many of our financial uh, technology peers, we don't actually collect the data on the consumer. Instead, we're focused on the transactional. Data. But, but the, the cybersecurity as a, you know, as a subject has been a real concern for, for the mobile pay industry. How do you counter that? What do your products do in terms of keeping this information safe? Sure, it's a great question. So um, our business is actually uh, very highly regulated already. So for example, in Europe, uh, we comply with the GDPR, the Global Data Privacy Regulation. In the United States, we're audited and reviewed by the Federal Reserve for purposes of cybersecurity and otherwise. So actually, uh, as a technology company, and we spend about half a billion dollars a year in our business in technology, um, security is actually a core strength. All of our data is encrypted and tokenized. And as I mentioned a minute ago, our customer is really the merchant, not the consumer. So unlike some of the folks who have had more notable privacy issues recently, we're not trying to monetize consumer data. So for our viewers, who are your competitors? Are they the banks or are they more like Stripe and PayPal? So historically, Robert, they were really the banks because many of our businesses came out of financial institutions. Great example is JP Morgan, who's still, uh, still in the business. But as technology has gone on, if you went back and looked five years ago, Apple was not in payments. Google was not in payments. Square didn't exist. Today, all those things do exist. So today, our competitors are Square, um, are Stripe. Uh, PayPal actually is one of our customers, but certainly in certain markets, uh, PayPal uh, competes with us. So uh, we have a much broader technology group of peers today than you would have had in banks many years ago. And what do you specifically do as a company, if anything, to uh, prevent your intellectual property, your uh, software, your copyrights from being violated in China? So the way we uh, go about our business is in certain markets, both by policy as well as regulation in China is actually one of them. Our data has to reside within the four walls of that country. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Russia, uh, coming now in India with their most recent regulatory moves and also in China, that data cannot leave the four walls of China. As a result, uh, we have largely isolated um, our technology environments in those markets. We're not going to get the economies of scale as a technology matter in bringing them out anyway, and that data needs to reside within the four walls of China. So those businesses are largely hived off from a technology point of view from the rest of global payments, making it therefore more secure within the walls of China and globally. Mm. How many countries are you in? So, Robert, we're physically in 31 countries, so that's going to be 32 in January yeah. as we go into Mexico with HSBC, but 31 countries um, today. We do business, though, cross-border in 58. So we have the broadest group of technology services. If you go back to the folks that you mentioned before, Stripe, Square, and the like, uh, we have the broadest group um, of anyone in the world. Did you have to transfer your technology to your Chinese counterparts or the Chinese government in order to operate there? No, we're regulated um, in those markets in China, in particular by the local uh, governments. But no, in general, those are local instances with local technology providers in that market. And it's not the same technology that we use elsewhere um, around, uh, around the world. Which of the countries in which you operate is the most difficult to deal with? Well, the most important thing in our business is just really the health of the consumer. So the way I think about your question is, how well is the consumer doing? I no, would I'm say, talking about the government. Oh, from, a, from, a regulatory, <laughs> yeah, from a regulatory and um, a you know, government pressure point Well, of view. we're regulated in every market we're in. There's really no one that's uh, better or worse. I would say, as time has gone on, uh, increasingly having to keep all of our data and technology within a given market in China, in Russia, in India, presents a bit of a scale challenge to our business because we prefer to be able to do that centrally here in the United States. Right. But that's been true for a number of years, and that's not specific to any one country. All three of those countries, for example, have that regulation today. So, so Jeffrey, let, let's get into e-commerce a bit because the, the worry in this market as we look at interest rates where they are and a, a, as we look at the, the market sell-off related to worries over the global slowdown, what are you seeing in terms of e-commerce? So the consumer is very healthy in our business. We just reported in November for our September quarter, our second best quarter ever, and it was pretty much tied with the second quarter, which was our best quarter ever. And our outlook for this holiday season in the fourth quarter is a continuation of the best quarters that we've seen the last couple of quarters. So our e-commerce business, Maria, for example, just grew in the high teens in the most recent quarter and has doubled um, in the last three years with the second largest provider of e-commerce acquiring services in the world. So we are very optimistic um, in, our, uh, in our business as e-commerce not grows just 
uh, with GDP, but takes increasing share from physical store presence. But well, what about on the horizon? I mean, the worry really is in the next two years that things are slowing down. Do you have any indications of a slowdown in the two-year horizon ahead? No, we do not. Okay. Um, the only place that you really see that, Maria, is in foreign exchange rates. As I mentioned in answer to Robert's question, we operate in 58 countries around the world. The U.S. is our home market and three quarters of our business. But we have a billion dollars of revenue that's outside the United States. And you guys can see what's happening uh, in FX Daily. Putting that aside, for example, we have not seen any impact from the tariffs uh, and the other trade things that you've seen in, uh, in the press. That can change going forward, but that's where we are today. So are people actually using Bitcoin, or is it still kind of a promising technology and a curiosity for hobbyists? So we've enabled a, a Bitcoin acceptance since 2014 at Global Payments. We're a technology company, but there's really no volume on it. The reason for that is it's much more of a, a commodity today than it is a currency. In, a currency. Until the volatility settles down on Bitcoin, yeah. it's very hard for our merchants to accept that is a method of payment. For example, groceries might have a, a wholesale, grocery wholesalers might have a one to two percent margin. If the thing moves four points a day, it's very hard for a grocer to accept Bitcoin mm -hmm. as a yeah, form that's of a payment. Good so, so you're in payments in 30 plus countries. What's the underlying capital that you have to put into each country? Is it capitalized, your, all your businesses in each country? Because, you know, I've been, in, you know, when I ran UBS, mm -hmm. you know, our biggest concern was you have a global um, business and then you get ring fenced on your capital. So that's really not true uh, in our business. 85% uh, of what we do, Robert, is really run right here at the United States as a technology matter. Now we do spend a lot in capital. It's a technology company. This year will spend $200 million um, on, uh, on capital, the vast majority of which is going right into technology, but that's driven at scale. Well, I mean, look, scale economy. FinTech has been the hottest thing. I know you've been doing your fair share of acquisitions. Mm -hmm. More consolidation, you think, for technology and financial services? Absolutely, Maria. It, it's scale in a scale business. More scale in a scale business is a good thing, so I expect that uh, to continue. Jeff, it's good to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Jeff Sloan right. joining us there.